Now, a couple of you guys had correctly noticed that in my Missouri hunt video, I was using fobs, but also I was able to get a full pass through and still have the lighted knock attached to the arrow and able to find my arrow that way in the snow. And so the question is, how did that happen? Because typically with fobs, the way they work is they have a little lip that goes in between the back of the arrow shaft and the knock, so that when the fob pops off, it takes the knock with it. So what I did is just a really simple modification. I'll kind of explain why I did it and how I did it, and then you guys can have the option to do that yourself. I took the fob, and instead of having that little lip that goes in between the arrow shaft and your knock, I got rid of that lip. So effectively, I was able to take my fob and drill it out so that I could slide it onto the back of my arrow shaft, and then I could basically adhere it wherever I wanted to on the shaft. Now for me, usually when I fletch an arrow, I have the back of my veins just about an inch or so from the back end of the carbon. So where I put my fob was pretty much right at that same spot, just about an inch from the back end of the arrow. Now one thing that also does for me is with especially these short knocks like these, these are the little 204 fire knocks, really short knock throat. So if I were to just run a standard fob with a knock like that, I would typically have string pinch. I talked about that in my fob review video. So by gluing this thing an inch from the back end, it completely eliminates any kind of facial contact, completely eliminates any kind of string pinch. And then of course, when you get a pass through, as the arrow is going through and that fob gets hit, it breaks that glue joint and slides the fob right over the top of the knock, leaves the knock intact. And like you guys saw in that video in Missouri, if I didn't have a lighted knock attached to that arrow, I probably never would have found it. Taking a shot on the ground in the snow and that arrow was completely buried and it was really just the glow of the knock that allowed me to find that arrow. So my arrows are a certain size and depending on what size arrows you guys have, which fob you're using, you're gonna have to use a different size drill bit if you wanna do this modification. And it should go without saying, but obviously this is permanent. Once you do this, you can't go back to using it as a normal fob. With these arrows I was using mostly this year, they're the Grizzly Stick Momentums and 240 spine. If I go ahead and measure the back end of the arrow, I get somewhere really close to around 280. So my arrow size, if I take that 930 seconds drill bit and I drill out the fob, I can then slide it over the arrow shaft. And for gluing it in place, this is really the point in the build where it starts to kind of matter exactly how much glue you put on. The trick is you want to be able to put on just enough glue to hold this thing in place while it's flying, but not so much that you have a really large amount of resistance on a pass through. But even if you do over glue it, what's the worst that's gonna happen? You're gonna have that thing significantly reduce its penetration after you've already got 28 inches or so of penetration. So realistically on a deer, it's not gonna matter much if you do over glue it. But what I like to do is, again, just put a little bit of glue on and then just test shoot it. If you don't have enough glue, you're gonna know because the fob will move. So take a couple test shots, make sure, measure, make sure it hasn't moved, and then you'll know you had enough glue. In order to apply just a little bit of glue, I use this Loctite precision pen. It seems to work really well. I'll basically just take this precision pen and put three tiny little dabs right on where those wings are in the fob and then just let it dry. And that gives me just enough where I can shoot it and it holds on just fine. But yet, as you guys saw in that video, I was able to get a full pass through on that buck and that arrow just kept on going and sunk really deep into the snow. One other important note, you're gonna to wanna to put the glue on this side of the fob, not this side, because once you break that glue joint, you want the fob to basically just be able to slide unimpeded off the end of the arrow shaft. Whereas if you have the glue on this side, if you bust that glue joint, now it's gotta push those little bits of glue out of the way and it's got a lot more resistance to overcome. So definitely glue on this side of the shaft. Like I said, it's just a really easy modification. It's permanent. But for me, if I'm gonna use fobs, I think it makes sense. I like this modification enough that I'll probably continue to do it. I'll either shoot regular veins, feathers, fobs. Really, I mean, if you wanna figure out what's the best, you should go out after you tune your bow and uh, knock index your arrows, shoot a whole bunch of different vein and fletching configurations find out which works the best for you. That's really the best way to figure out what is the best. But this is just a basic another option. It's another tool in the box to be able to utilize. And if you guys have any questions, please leave in the comments down below. And thanks for watching.